Good morning. I noticed there was no name on the um, bulletin who was going to be doing the prayer, and it wasn't supposed to be me, it was supposed to be someone else, but I'm here now. But anyway, <laughs> one of the reasons I say that is because one of the things that I do as another little tool, because I'm awful with names, is when someone is coming up, I get to check their name and make sure I actually know their name when they're coming up. So I'm Calvin, by the way. Our scripture reading today is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4, I'll be reading in the NIV. Let's see which version I can see the best with my glasses with all these different places. I think this one's the best. Um, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly I tell you, they have received the reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Thank you. Thank you, Calvin. Good morning, guys. How are you? Let's try that again. Good morning, guys. How are you? Awesome. Good deal. It's good to see all of you all in here today. And it uh, looks like we got some folks that traveling over the, the holiday. Um, this is one of the most traveled holidays because this is pretty much the last one you get uh, before uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas and all the other great stuff. But it's good to have you here. Uh, and we're happy to have each and every one of you in the presence uh, of one another today as we worship Almighty God. Um, also, it's good to hear Jackie in the audience. Praise yeah. God. Yes, indeed. Jackie's been away from us, and I, and I heard him on the live stream on the way here, and I was like, oh, Jackie's at, <laughs> he's at, but keep, continue to keep praying for, uh, for Frances as uh, she continues to heal and get better, and, and we're asking God in his time uh, that he will heal her to a place where she'll be able to come back and be with us here in the sanctuary. Um, also, continue to pray for those, again, uh, who are traveling uh, this weekend. Continue to just uh, lift them up as they come back uh, and be with us uh, again. So as I told you last week, I promised you all that I would show you some of the decor that, um, that, we, that was, was put into place uh, for our teachers. And again, I said it last week, but I want to say it again this week. Um, to everybody who teaches, thank you. Amen. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for the hard work that goes into what you do, the time and um, the effort and the energy, thank you. Because most of our teachers, all of our teachers are on a volunteer basis pretty much. And so we thank you all for uh, just what you do for us. And so I just wanna show you a couple, couple of photos here. So you have the folks in the kitchen, you know, doing their thing and you know, you know something's going on because Daniel has that apron and he's ready to, He's ready to get it, ain't that right? And, and, um, and, and the whole crew, the whole staff, they just did an amazing, amazing job. And then uh, the decor of it all was just amazing. Um, a lot of time went into this. A lot of time, don't think that people just go slap tablecloths on, a, on a lot of time goes into this. And so uh, we, thank, we thank everybody that was involved. And then the dessert table was amazing. Not amazing, it was amazing. <laughs> Um, if you didn't get a chance to get some of that, you just, I don't, I don't know what got into you because we're not losing weight right now. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, we're going into the season where we're all going to gain some weight. So, um, so that was the dessert table there. And then I just put at the very end, Quest gets his moment, right? <laughs> he gets his moment. Um, and we appreciate again, our teachers for everything that you all do, um, uh, for everything that you guys do and for everything that you guys uh, pour into us as adults, but uh, mainly for those who pour into our children. Thank you, thank you, um, thank you. Um, so this, this week, y'all, I learned a new song. Y'all, I'm sure y'all know it, but I learned it. So um, I wanna sing it with you guys, but I need you guys' help. Can we do that? Okay, here we go. How do you explain, how do you describe a love that goes from east to west and runs as deep as it is wide? Mm, you know all I hold, well, Lord, you know our fears, and words cannot express the love. Oh, 
in verse 2 next week, and we'll do that. All right? So check this out. So Matthew chapter 5, we went through a whole adventure. And if you went and you saw the bulletin and you actually read the bulletin, I would make it an interactive, but I don't want you to embarrass yourself. Uh, and I don't want nobody telling that they didn't. If you read the article, the article basically was a summation of what we dealt with over the past 10 weeks. And I had a, I had a really awesome time with Matthew chapter 5. I really did. I had an awesome time with it. But I told you here over the next 12 weeks, we're going to be dealing in Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 7. um, And the first part of Matthew chapter 6 deals with secrecy. And this morning we're going to talk about the discipline of secrecy. Because understand, um, if I could summarize the whole entire uh, Matthew chapter 6, it's simply this, is that everybody don't have to know what you're doing. It's not necessary. You don't have to always shout out to the mountaintops what you're doing or what you did. That doesn't even matter. Because at the end of the day, we know that God sees. And if God is our audience, we don't care who in our humanity realm really sees what we do because the only person that we're trying to please is God. So in verse number one, Jesus says, he comes out extremely strong, and he says, first of all, beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. In essence, Jesus says, don't just do stuff to do stuff so that people can see you do stuff. That don't make sense because if all you're doing is doing things so that you can be seen doing things, Jesus says that that has no benefit to the Father. He says otherwise because he says otherwise you have no reward with your Father in heaven. He says your Father can't do anything with you just wanting to be seen. Does that make sense? So the word beware suggests the meaning as in the NIV uh, puts it out there. The NIV has the closest uh, version to this, and that just simply means be careful. In essence, always be recollecting in your mind what it is that you are trying to do. What am I trying to accomplish? Who am I trying to accomplish this for? Before you do things, you should actually be prayerful about what you are going to do before you do it. Because there are a lot of us in here today, we just do stuff, but we never ask God about what we're getting ready to do. We only start asking God about what we're going to do when we find ourselves backed into a corner. And that's so unfortunate because we never have to be backed into the proverbial corner if we would just ask God first. There are things in your life that you shouldn't even have dealt with but you dealt with it because you didn't ask God first. Are y'all seeing that? So here it is. Jesus, he's beginning this new context concerning how to give. And I know that giving is one of the most uncomfortable subjects in church, but but you have to understand there is a proper way to give, but it's not just a proper way to give in church. There is a proper way to give to the poor, and there is a proper way of how to pray for those who need you. Does that make sense? And so right out of the gate, Jesus is issuing an extreme warning about how. He says, I need y'all to realize that how is everything. It's not the what, but it's the how did you do it. It's not what amount was given, but how was it given. So think about this. Jesus says, be, be careful of practicing your righteousness before men. Righteousness, translated from, from the Greek word uh, diocene, simply means to do what is right. And so Jesus says, be careful how you do what is right. You say, well, I thought the only thing that mattered was doing what's right. Jesus says, be careful about why you do what is right. Jesus is focusing on motive. And here over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be looking at motive. We're going to be looking at motive, motive. Everybody say that with me. Motive, motive. Your motive matters. Are you hearing that? It matters. You can't just say, well, I did what was right. 
But sometimes we do what was right, but our motive was not right. And so because the action was right, but if the heart was wrong, then it made it all wrong. Think about it. Mathematic equation shares that with you. If you have a negative times a positive, what do you get? Negative. If you get a right times a wrong, what do you have? Wrong. It's the way it works. And so God rewards the deed, Jesus says, that is done for his glory alone. Make, I, need, I, need, I need us to, to take that in. He says, the only way that I can reward you is when you are doing so that I can get glory alone. So think about this. Just because you do what is right doesn't necessarily mean that God is good with what is done. Because if God is not getting all of the glory, he, God is not a God who wants to share in glory. God wants all of the glory because he is the one who enabled you to do what is right. How do you know, Jeremy? Because none of us outside of the help of God know what's good. We have no idea what good is if the help of God is not there showing us what is good. So here it is. A good deed can be done, but if it's done for recognition, God is not okay with that. I'm driving that home because I need us to see that. A good deed can be done, but if it's done for display, God is not okay with that. If it's done for applause, if you do it because you want your name called, God is not, God prefers for people who don't mind working in the background and don't ever have to have their name called, but they are just saying, I want to give God all the credit. That's what God wants. God wants people that are, looking, that are looking to figure out how can I do his will and he get all the credit for it. So think about this. A good deed can be done, but what happens if it's done out of guilt? God is not okay with you functioning out of guilt. Because in our function, if we want him to get all of the glory, then our motive has to be that we do it because we love him. I have to do what I do because I love God. And because I love God, I want people to see God, but I don't want them to see God so that they can see me, but I want them to see God in how God uses me to affect their life. So verse one, if you value the reward, this is what Jesus says. He says, he says, if you're doing it to be noticed, you have no reward with your father who is in heaven. If you value the reward of other people, there is no reward with God. So you have to, in essence, we are in a, in a, in a we're in a, a, a thought space where we always have to be, be mindful that which reward do I want? Do I want the applause or do I want God to give and deliver the reward? And I need us to understand that a lot of times the reward that we have sometimes will not show up right now. Are you okay with that? That's, that's a rhetorical, don't answer that out loud. You have to be okay with this idea that if I, my reward doesn't come until I see Jesus, I'm going to be okay with that. So here's the truth. When trying to please the Father, nobody, everybody say nobody, nobody. should have any influence on the why, the what, the who, or the how. When you want to please God, nobody should be able to influence why you did it, what you did, who you did it for, or how you went about. Nobody should influence that if God is the audience of who you trying to please. So the Pharisees, have y'all noticed this is always the Pharisees, right? 
The Pharisees made a faulty assumption that because I did it, it means that I must be complete in my obedience to God because I did it. Let me give you an example. Sometimes we come to church, but we don't come to church to worship. We come to church out of obligation. You say, what's the difference? The difference is, is that when I feel obligated, I'm coming because I, I want to show God that I want to be obedient. When I come to church for worship, it says that I am showing God how appreciative I am for not only what he's doing, what he's getting ready to do, but I'm appreciative because of what God has already done. Y'all see the difference? One is me telling God, thank you for doing it. The other one says, God, I'm here because I'm supposed to be. And that's what the Pharisees thought. They thought, I, I do what I do because that's what I'm supposed to do. And if I do what I'm supposed to do, then I must love God because I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But it's not about the supposed to. I do it because I want to tell God, thank you for what you're doing with me. Thank you that you have given me a, another chance. Thank you that, so worship, whatever you do for the glory of God, it should always be about telling him, thank you for what you're doing with me. Now, I thank you that you're going to now use me for your purpose. Because realize this, y'all. Do, do we understand today that God does not need us? I hope we understand that. God does not need us to accomplish his task, but we have a privilege to be used of God. We have a privilege to be used by God for the purpose of God so that God can, can, can see what we do and then we give him all the glory for using us because we understand he doesn't have to. Realize that if you thought God needed you, when you, one day you're not going to wake up and the world is going to keep what? Going. So what are you saying to me, Jerry? I'm saying that instead of looking at this as, as if God owes us something, when we do what we do, we ought to see it as, God, I'm thankful that you would use somebody like me. And I don't know, maybe you think you are in this space today and you have perfection written all over your forehead. Maybe you wrote it on your head before you walked through the door today. I don't know, but it is a privilege to be used of God. So think about this. God is not passing out bonuses just because you did something without looking at the motivation. Think about what I just said. I did something. I need a bonus. God says, wait a minute, before I give it, what was the motivation behind it? And it trips, that trips me up every time. So think about this. Jesus says, verse 2, when you give to the poor, don't say nothing. That's not when he says, don't sound a trumpet before you. It just literally means don't make some noise as you're walking because of what you did. That does not, what you did... God allowed for you to do. In essence, if you say, well, I, 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 I'm the one that, but you have to realize, you say, I'm the one that did it, but you have to realize that God is the one who enables us to do. Because here, here's the reality. You ready? The reality is, is that all of us are selfish by nature. Nobody agrees with that, but that's okay. You'll walk out of here shaking your head. Yeah, he got me on that one. We are all selfish by nature. Our nature says that, that we are, and we use the saying, we are in a dog-eat-dog -dog type of world, and everybody's looking to make sure that I am all right. You say, well, no, that ain't me. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. If you say that's not you, 
pass out your last and let's see how well you do. Because I'm going to tell you, I would struggle. And my faith ain't bad, but I would struggle. Because I realize that I have a, 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 great, a great responsibility. And at some point in time, I realize that I should trust God more when I have this great task, but it's hard giving my last and still jumping up and down saying, yes, God, I trust you. That's a vulnerable moment. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be very transparent with you. Because I need everybody in here to realize today that everybody has their struggle. And God is saying that, yes, I know that the struggle that you have is real, but I still need you to trust me. I still need you to trust me. That's why he says when you give to the poor, don't sound your trumpet as the hypocrites do. And in the streets so that they may be honored by men, he says, if you trust me, just keep doing what you do and watch what I do. Does that make sense? So he first addresses the giving of alms, right? The giving of alms just simply means the giving of the poor. And the Jewish law commanded that people who were to give, that the people were to give to those who were in need. This is the precedence that was set in Deuteronomy 15. And notice how Jesus just simply repeats the precedence. Here's the precedence, Deuteronomy chapter 15. He says, uh, uh, this is Moses. He says, give liberally and be ungrudging when you do so. For on this account, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in all that you undertake, since there will never cease to be some in need on earth. I therefore command to you. You see that in the text? He says that there will never be a day where somebody won't need. Y'all see that? And what, what does Moses say? Moses says, give liberally and don't do so in a grudging fashion. So what is liberal? It means to literally give as if you would want somebody to give the same thing back to you if you were in the same predicament. So think about this. Moses says, give liberally and don't do it complaining. He says, there will always be somebody on earth that needs you. And so he says, therefore, I command you, open your hand to the poor and needy neighbor in your land. We all pass by somebody every day who look, has the look of need. And, and not even just pass by. Sometimes we have full knowledge of people that are in need and yet we have more than enough, and yet we don't give to those in need. So think about this. I want you to notice in, from Deuteronomy 15, notice the commandment that Moses gives. Now notice what Jesus says in verse 2. Y'all ready? Notice how Jesus puts the word when and what? Not if. Y'all see that? What that tells me is, is that the opportunity is going to show up. It's going to happen. And this was an expectation of the followers of God to continue to perform the Deuteronomy 15 principle. In essence, the only difference was that Jesus wanted the motive to be different between his followers and the hypocrites. But notice how Jesus didn't change the principle. He says, I'm not going to change the principle. I just want the motive to match the principle. In essence, I want the heart to match the principle. I want the principle to be geared by the heart. So I want the heart to then be the thing that jumpstarts the car so that the principle can move because the heart is ready. So think about this. There are, there are some in here today who have given, who have given with a bad heart. You put somebody, and, and, and here, here's another transparency moment. The, the people who are on the corners, I typically have a stash of coins or dollars in my car. Um, 
And anytime I see somebody, I'll roll down the window and give them $2. But you know what my thought is when I give that to them? All they're going to do is just go buy some drugs or some alcohol or... And, 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 and here's the thing. Why did I then give it if my heart was not in the... Pl- and sometimes, as Pharisaic as it is, you have to realize that your heart has to be in the place of where your principle is if you want God to, to, to bless what you just did. If my, if, if my heart, and, and over the course of the years, my heart has changed to where I'm at this point in my life now, I don't care what they do with it. I just hope they do it to, and put that money in a place that will be beneficial to them. That's what, that's what Jesus wants. Jesus says it's not about what they do with it when you give it to them. If all that it is, all that it's about is where is your heart and did you do it? Their response to what you did is between them and their creator. Are y'all seeing that? So here's the thing. Hypocrite. We love this word. It's a, it's a good church word. Hippocrates is the Greek word. It simply means someone who is an actor that wore a mask and pretended to be someone else other than yourself. That's what a hypocrite is. It's just somebody who pretends to be someone that they're not. And the true intent of a hypocrite was to do good and do good acts for appearance not out of compassion or good motives. So Jesus says, but when you give, y'all see that? Verse two, he says, so when you give, verse three says, but when you give to the poor, he says, go as far as, and this is a, this is just a, 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 a figurative example that he uses. He says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. He demonstrates the importance of having pure motives when giving to God and giving to others. Your heart has to be in the right place if God is going to bless you because what you gave him and what you gave to other people. So here it is. And I made up a word this week, so help me. Showiness should never be the motive of what you give. I'm giving because I want everybody to see what I got. It ain't about what you have. It's about using what you've been blessed with for the glory of God. And, 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 and I'll even take it a step further. Sometimes you have, to, you have to take the person you are giving to out of the equation and say, God, how do you want me to use what I've been blessed with? And then God, show me how to use what I've been blessed with. Show me how you want me to use it. And then God, give me the heart to use it how you showed it to me. And then that's it. It's not about the person on the other end. It's about what you've been blessed with. And now how do you bless because you've been blessed? Are y'all seeing them? Uh, Sometimes you have to look at it that way. I've been blessed. So now how can I bless? So think about it. So easy and often is that we give with mixed, mixed motives. We do something for someone if it will benefit us in return. I'm looking for something back. But here's the problem. The problem is, is that we're looking for something back from the wrong person. Because if you're giving to somebody who's in need, how can they give something back to you? They wouldn't need you if they could give it back to you. Oh, I just helped somebody in here with that. I I did. So here's the thing. Here's the reality. Jesus does not forbid record keeping. He does not forbid receding. He does not forbid reporting procedures because that's good stewardship. Jesus does not forbid that. The only thing that Jesus condemns is the act of practice to impress. That's the only thing he condemns. When one tries to impress, it only distracts 
and takes the attention away from God. And God says, I'm not going to fight you for no attention. If you want it, God says, you can have it, but that's all you getting. So verse four, he says this, he says, but when you give, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, verse 4, so that your giving will be in secret. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. The idea of being presented provides an understanding from Old Testament scripture that nothing is hidden from God. Typically in the Old Testament, um, the idea of nothing being hidden from God was threatening more than it was comforting. But within this context, the good that is done in secret is said to be rewarded by God. And so God simply says, I want to reward, but how do you want your reward? Do you want it by people who can't give you nothing or do you want it by the one who gave you everything? So consider this. Jesus suggests that the only person that matters in your giving is the one who can provide rewards. What does that tell me? That tells me that none of us can do much for each other as far as reward is concerned. You can give me something I probably already got. And I can give you something, probably that, something that you already have. But when it comes to rewards, a reward is something that you cannot attain alone. And so God is saying that at some point in your life, who do you want the attention from? Do you want it from your fellow man or do you want it from me? And he says, and if you're going to get it from them, just know that one day they got to go to the same route you have to go. And they won't be able to sing your praises. Any, one day this all has to come to an end and the people that sing your praises won't be able to do it any longer. So Jesus says in essence, go ahead and sing the praises of God voluntarily. Don't have to sing his praises involuntarily. Does that make sense? That's all I have for you today. I pray that you've received something from this message today that you can take home with you, do something with it, mold it around, put it in your thoughts. About in, in just in the, in, the, in the perspective of how we give, not just in church, but how we give to each other. More importantly, as the text points out, how we give to those in need. Let, 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 watch, our, watch our method, watch our heart, watch our motive. And if we have all that lined up, I'm telling you, there's nothing that God can't give to us because of the right heart that we started with. If you're here today and you are, you are in need of a relationship with Jesus, listen, God, God is saying, I gave it all to you. Now, will you give it to me? Will you give it to me? He says, I've given you everything that you need. Will, will you give it to me? Give him your life. And he then will in turn give you the sacrifice of his son. He then will in turn give you the indwelling of his spirit, the Holy Spirit, that will dwell in you every single day. That's a reward that you want in your life. And that's a reward that you want to ensure that you hold on to for the rest of your life because God's going to hold on to you. He just wants you to hold on to him. You can, you can be a child of God today. The, the elders want to pray for you. They, they do. They want to pray for you today. But will you come? Will you come? Will you receive Jesus? Will you accept him in obedience and water? Will you receive him? He said, I've given. Now will you give me your life? You need prayer today. We want to pray about it. If you, you are a child of God, we want to pray with you too. Because life does get hard. Motive does get mixed. Compassion does fly out of the window sometimes. Will, will you get it right with God?
When we walk with the Lord in the light of 